In this video, I'm going to be sharing with you the third component to a successful offense in Madden 21. What's up, guys? My name is Cody, and I want to thank you for taking the time to watch this video. If this is your first time visiting my channel, my channel is all about helping people become the best Madden player that they can possibly become. And so if you are looking to get better at this game, I just want to encourage you to click the subscribe button at the bottom right hand corner of your screen. It's completely free to subscribe. And it just allows you to be able to stay up to date with the latest tips and strategies right here on the channel. Now in this video, we are talking specifically about constraint three plays. In the previous couple of videos, we've been covering the gun bunch, and we've been talking about how you can build the most dominant gun bunch offense in just five passing plays. And the reason that I believe you can do this is because it kind of comes out of a simple philosophy or a simple approach to this game that I think a lot of people would benefit from um, on the offensive side of the ball. It's basically an 80-20 analysis. It's like of the 80% of the results that we get, 80% of the successful plays that we call it really comes from only 20% of the plays in the playbook and so if you want to get my full gun bunch offensive guide I am going to leave a link to that in the description it breaks down everything from the bunch to the bunch tight end to the trip start and offset in the Jets playbook but in today's video we are specifically focusing in on the constraint theory play and what a constraint theory play is is it is simply a play that you'll go to whenever your opponent starts to overcommit whenever he starts to get over aggressive it's something that you can use to really be very very effective and so the way that we're going to start with this is we're going to start through the analysis of the play flood and then we're going to talk through the constraint theory play that we're actually going to call which is going to be a smash return or mesh either one of those can work i personally like smash return the best uh, but mesh is also very effective so we're going to start with the play flood and then we're going to work our way through this so the first thing is we're going to come out in the play flood and what we're gonna do defensively is kind of start with a traditional Mabel coverage. This is a coverage you're probably gonna see online. It's where they have their flats at five yards, their curl flats are at 25, and their hook curls at five. And so what's gonna happen is, what they're basically going to do is it's very, very likely that you're going to see a coverage just like this right here, where we essentially have a cover three style coverage. Now, the reason we like to play flood so much is because if they run that Mabel coverage, then what's going to happen is we can wait and that R1 receiver is going to basically get wide open on the sideline late within the route. You also are gonna be able to hit the in route on the left side. And so it creates kind of a two man read that is gonna be very effective. Another reason that we like this play is because if they run a cover four style, of, or I apologize, a cover three Mabel style of defense, what's going to happen is this little fade on the right side is actually relatively effective. It doesn't always get there, but as you see right here, if I do a nice little swerve catch, and I didn't get it right there, I didn't get the proper animation, but if I do a swerve catch right there, there is an opportunity for me to be able to beat the cover three uh, or the deep safety in the middle. And it's typically, you know, again, if the, if the safety's kind of in this area, now again, if he's in here, you know, he might be a little bit better equipped to stop this, but I just want you to see the concept. And basically what it, and, and I'll show you another play that we talked about here in just a moment, but essentially as you see right there, that's kind of what I'm after. And again, again, in game, this actually works a lot more consistently than it doesn't. But I want to share with you our counterplay as well. So our counterplay is basically a route combination that we can use that essentially is going to um, take advantage of some of the things, some of the adjustments that our opponent might make. And so some of the adjustments might be solved by just going to this play right here, Jets Dig. You're going to see that we have this nice little check down route to the uh, receiver right there. But we also have this really, really good cover three bomb over the top to the R1 receiver. And so this kind of leaves the defense in a little bit of a dilemma. Um, because the defense can't play 25 yard zones, they have to play you know 15. They can't play cover three as a traditional cover three. They have to play a very specific type of cover three to, for this to work. So I'll show this one more time. And what you'll see is, again, right in here, um, that's what I'm talking about. As you see right there, it just glitches out the deep middle third. And as you can see, it's a wide open one play touchdown. Now, to kind of illustrate this just a little bit further out, I want to share with you one last thing, and that is, um, what if they run like a cover four? So if they run like a cover four show two, cover four drop style defense, um, you're going to notice that this Jets dig play, this R1 receiver uh, will be able to get over the top, 
Rodgers gave me kind of a terrible throw right there. But basically, if they run cover four, it's likely, number one, that their Mabel coverage is not going to – they're not going to have – the resources to do this. But basically, you know, even if they run like a Tampa 2 style defense, you're going to see kind of the same circular issue that's going to happen. And that's primarily that that curl flat zone is dropping way too deep. And so I can easily just hit that, hit that out route consistently. I can also hit the in route consistently. So this causes the defense to have to adjust. Okay. It causes them to have to adjust in a couple of different ways. But one of the ways that they're going to have to adjust um, is they're going to have to basically change their zone drops. If they're going to play zone drops, they're going to have to change them. Um, it's very likely that they will change them, and it's very likely that they're going to go down to kind of a 15-yard style of zone drop for you to, for them to be able to stop this Mabel play. And that is where the play smash return really comes in handy. So um, if they do this, uh, what you're going to see is you're going to see something like this, basically a 5, 15, and 5. This is going to help them kind of defend that route. But the other thing that they're going to have to do is they're not just going to have to do that, but they're going to have to do one step further. What they're going to have to do is they're going to have to have a deep half on the right side. If they have that without that deep half, they're going to get glitched out every time. So they have to deep half the right side if they want to play, you know, really anything. Even if they want to play cover four, and if they play cover four, they're taking away an underneath defender that they kind of need. So that's where this play smash return comes in. So all we're going to do is we're going to streak the R1 receiver. We're going to then take the circle receiver, and you can do kind of whatever you want, honestly. Um, what I like to do with the circle receiver is I actually like to go ahead and just simply put him on like a little baby hitch route just like this. I like to take my running back and put him on a little in route in case they're you know not playing the flats. I can take the flats to the right, and then the square receiver kind of typically will stay on his little dig. But what's going to happen is that this X receiver is going to get way, way open. As you see right there, um, I mean, that's probably about a 50-yard dot over the top to that tight end. That's the beauty of a constraint theory. Once we start to see that they're kind of giving um, us a little bit of trouble, you know, maybe they're kind of over-adjusting to the out route, they're overdoing it, whatever it might be, that's where you can really get them with something like this right here. And you honestly don't even have to adjust it that much. If you wanted to just put a streak to the R1 receiver and a wheel route to the R to the to the tr the running back, you're still going to have a lot of success. As you see right there, you know it's just it's going to be very difficult for them to stop it, especially if they're in that type of coverage. Now I want to talk just for a moment about like a cover four drop kind of coverage because um, that is something that they could do. So as you see here, you know this is basically a Ma you know Mabel coverage, the way that I've created it. Um, but the beauty of this play is this little route right here, the circle receiver route is super, super underrated. Um, it's, a, it's a little like kind of whip route. It does good against man and zone coverage. But as you see, it's kind of a late read. It kind of brings it over the, over the middle of the field and kind of provides you a great opportunity to check it down to, the, to that receiver. The other reason that I really like this is what you're going to notice here is, again, this is cover four. And as you can see, that tight end route is just consistently getting open. The other thing, and one last little tip about this, is if you see a defense like this, okay, what you want to do is you want to kind of set your adjustments up. So we know we're going to streak the R1 receiver, and we know we're going to wheel the running back. And then you just want to flip your play to the short side. This corner route is actually really, really good to the short side. Um, and what you'll see is when you run this to the short side, it's very, very difficult for someone to be able to stop it. As you can see on the sideline, just a nice, easy read. That's the beauty of the bunch offense. It really does have an answer for pretty much everything that the defense is going to do. And so if you want to get my complete gun bunch offensive guide, I'm going to leave a link to that in the description. It's just $15 and it covers the bunch, the bunch tight end, and the trip tight end offset. All three of those guides are rolled into one for you. But I really believe you can dominate offensively if you really get a good grasp of number one, what's a power play? Number two, what is a counter play? And then number three, what's a constraint three play? Once they start to over adjust, once they start to kind of take that step, what do you go to that is going to really force an, a, a further adjustment? And this is my favorite play for that. So thanks for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. We're going to be streaming tonight at 8 o'clock p.m. Eastern time if you want to come by the channel. But if you also, if you want to get uh, my bunch guide, it is available down in the description. Thanks for your time.